Hey everyone, it's Ben, and next week I'm headed out on my first substantial hike of the year, and I wanted to show you my ultralight backpacking gear list. So a few things I wanted to mention before we dig into the pack. A lot of videos on YouTube show a base weight configuration. What base weight is, is your pack, your sleep system, and your shelter, and not your consumables such as your food, your water, and your fuel for cooking. I wanted to show a complete list as if I were to jump out of the car and head out on the trail. The only thing you're not gonna see in this pack is my first night's meal. Generally the first night I'll bring meats and other perishable items that I can consume the first night and I don't have to worry about them spoiling after several days. So that's about the only thing that you're not gonna see in this pack. A couple of the other items that are not gonna be in the pack would be things that I would carry on my body, like a knife, uh, maybe an additional flashlight sometimes, sunglasses of course, a hat, and the clothing that I'm wearing. Now when it comes to base weight, there are several different types of people. Types of people that will drill holes in their toothbrush, for example, gram weenies that will shave off parts of their stove or you know, clip tags and things like that. Things to really lower the overall weight of the pack. And yes, it does add up. More grams equal more ounces, more ounces equal more pounds. So anywhere that you can save is gonna help in the long run. However, a few things you shouldn't do are one, you shouldn't sacrifice weight for comfort. For example, it's gonna be cooler this uh, next few days when we're headed out hiking. So I wanna bring an additional jacket and I wanna bring a little bit warmer sleep system and those things are gonna add on additional ounces. But again, I'm not gonna sacrifice comfort for uh, saving a few ounces. Another thing that Luke from the Outdoor Gear Review mentioned in his backpacking video are you're really not gonna be able to tell the difference between nine or 11 pounds on your back, for example. So as long as you're in that 10 pound ballpark, I consider that ultra light. So I believe my base weight is just under 10 pounds. I believe it's eight or nine pounds. Now I am going with a different shelter system this time. I'm trying one out. Uh, so that I can review it in the future instead of taking my hammock. If I were to take my hammock system and my down quilts, I would have saved about a pound. But again, you know, it's not that big a deal. People with disabilities, maybe someone that has a bad back or bad hips or something and they prefer a thicker sleeping pad, again, to carry the extra ounces and take what's gonna be more comfortable. Now, does that mean going to a five or six pound Alice pack because it's got a better frame? Definitely not. The lower you go in weight, the lower you have to worry about a frame and proper hip support. This pack is one of the great examples of that where it does have a lightweight frame in it and it does have hip support. But again, with my weight being maybe around 15, uh, 20 pounds at the absolute max with everything that I need to hit the trail, I'm not so concerned with a really heavy duty frame system or a really heavy duty hip belt. And lastly, it typically costs a lot of money to go ultra light. Sleep systems, shelters, and packs. The lighter you go, generally the more expensive they are. So upgrade over time and you will be able to dial in a system that works for you. So this is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 2400 pack. It's a perfect uh, multi-day pack when you wanna go light and fast. It's made out of this Dyneema uh, fabric. And again, although it has two stays in it for a frame, it doesn't have a full frame like some of the larger packs have. But again, coming in at one pound, 14 ounces, you can see that you're saving you know, a few pounds at least off a traditional backpacking pack. So again, the big three, a pack, your shelter, and your sleep system are the main areas where you're gonna be able to save that weight. On the outside here, there's a huge pocket in the front and then two, two pockets on the side. Generally, I will put my water bottles on the side. The pockets are deep enough to hold a one liter bottle, so it's a good amount of water, two liters of water that I can easily access from outside of the pack. In the main pocket here, this is where I would put anything wet, like my tarp, for example. Right now, I just have a fuel canister. Now, this is a brand new full fuel canister. I'm definitely not gonna need that much fuel. So again, you could uh, use an older fuel uh, canister that was maybe half full or something and save some weight there. And then I have my water filter. So I keep this on the outside, not only because it's gonna get wet, but also so that I can fill up without having to dig in my bag. Now, a lot of you guys are probably gonna question the gear that I have in here. I will leave a detailed list below. This is the MSR Trail Shot. So again, you can check the description for a detailed list of everything that's in this pack. 
On the sternum strap of this pack, there is a whistle, so I always recommend taking a whistle. And then on the hip belt here, there's two pockets, two zip pockets, weather tight pockets. I'll probably put my cell phone in one, although I will still put it in a Ziploc bag. And then in the other, I just have my headlamp. This is the Olight H1R. This is actually about an ounce less than my Petzl or my uh, Black Diamond. So a nice bright headlamp and it can also double as a flashlight. So the other thing I will do is I will take out my snacks for the day and generally just put them down in this main pocket in a little Ziploc bag. That way again, I can just access those snacks until we stop for lunch or dinner. But on the go, I wanna be able to just access them without having to slow me down. All right, so let's get into the main compartment here. You notice it does not have a top lid. It's just a roll down top. And uh, to be honest with you, I did not miss the top lid at all. It's something that I really didn't use. When you flip it over, it always hangs way down. So I'd rather have larger compartments on the outside and go without the top lid. This particular pack has Velcro up here. It is fully waterproof too, so I don't need a uh, pack cover. Don't need a dry sack, although I do keep certain uh, items inside uh, in a dry sack. So first thing we have right up top here is my food. When we stop for lunch, for example, I'm going to want to grab my food. This is in a waterproof Sea to Summit uh, dry bag. The reason for that is this also doubles as my bear bag. It may not be approved in some places, but the place where we're going, uh, you know, you really don't even have to hang a bear bag, but it does have the uh, little hook on it so that I can do so if I need to. So this would include all my food for the three, uh, two nights and three days. And again, my first meal, my meal on my first night is gonna be like a steak or chicken or something, something that I can cook up that uh, I don't have to worry about going bad. So I have a couple uh, bags in here with snacks and it's basically just uh, granola bars and uh, got some cheese cubes in here. I've got some almonds, I've got some honey peanut butter. Uh, so those are, you know, snacks in between lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have some tortillas. You can do a lot with these. The, you can make a peanut butter and honey sandwich or you can get some meat and uh, cut it up, get some ham, for example, that first night. Uh, another snack bag here. I have some um, sweet mousse, hot chocolate, some really good hot chocolate. I have some uh, Dyneema line. This is like Zing It. So this is what I would use to throw it over the tree. Works way better than paracord. And then generally I'll just take a, uh, a dehydrated meal or two. So again, minus my first uh, dinner, this covers, there's some oatmeal in there as well, I believe. In one of the packages, there's some oatmeal. So uh, that would cover my breakfast, lunch, and dinner for uh, the next day and my breakfast and lunch for the day after that. Again, this doubles as a bag that I can hang. And then also inside here, I have a two gallon Ziploc. This is my trash bag. So uh, anything that, uh, that I open up would go in the trash bag and then the first road crossing or you know place where there may be a dumpster or a, uh, a trash can, I would go ahead and uh, toss the stuff in there out. Next in the pack, I have just a puffy coat. It's a puffy down coat. It is gonna get uh, down to the uh, upper 30s at night. So I'm bringing a puffy coat. It is lightweight, it does add some, some uh, ounces to your pack. But again, I wanna have that, uh, that comfort rather than the weight savings if it gets cold. Another thing that scooted out of there with the, uh, with the down coat, it's just a very lightweight raincoat. This thing is pretty much featherweight. Uh, I can just uh, keep this at the, in the top of my pack and if it starts to rain or something, I can throw this on over my clothes or even over the down jacket. So some additional layers of protection there. And then below that, I actually have my uh, extra clothing bag. Now this also doubles as my pillow. So I, would, I could stuff the raincoat or I could stuff the puffy coat in here and then this becomes my pillow. It's nice and soft. Uh, everything inside it is soft, so in my rain jacket. And all I have in here is just an extra pair of uh, boxers, a uh, long sleeve shirt, just a synthetic long sleeve shirt, and then an extra pair of socks. These are just uh, some darn tough socks. 
So obviously I will be wearing socks, I'll be wearing pants, I'll be wearing a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt. So these are just a few little extras that I like to take. If my feet were to get wet or clothing were to get wet, at least I'd, ha I'd have something to, to uh, wear while I dried the rest of the stuff off. All right, next up, I have my shelter system. This is just in a, uh, in a stuff sack, in a little lightweight Cordura nylon stuff sack from Sea to Summit. Uh, my shelter system is the MSR Nest and the MSR uh, Fly, or their MSR Wing they call it. I took those out of their own stuff sacks and just put them all into one so that my shelter components are all in one sack. So I have the uh, tarp and then I have the nest system. It's basically like a bug net with a floor and a tarp. Then next in here, of course, because I am sleeping on the ground, I have to have a sleeping pad. Again, something that I wouldn't need if I were in my hammock. This is a 13 ounce Thermarest, the Neo Air, I believe x Light. So super light pad. It's actually lighter than the uh, than the accordion style pad from Thermarest. So just a small inflatable pad. That'll go well with my, my uh, shelter system. Next up here I have sort of my first aid and my toiletries again in a Cordura stuff sack. Very lightweight but heavy duty. I like keeping things in a stuff sack that way they're compartmentalized and they're easy to grab. This weighs 15 ounces with everything in here. Let's go through what's in there. I just have um, some toilet paper. Just take the cardboard out of the center of the toilet paper. Hand sanitizer. And then again, I'm not going to need all this hand sanitizer. So if I wanted to save maybe an ounce or something, I could I could drain some of that. Um, and then I have a few dude wipes. They're basically just uh, flushable wipes. These were on sale. So actually at uh, what the, one of the grocery stores, these were on sale. So I picked a couple up. We'll give them a try and see how that works. But uh, it's always nice to be clean. And I'll take a few extra grams there to be to be clean. I have a uh, just a little waterproof first aid medical kit. It's got, I think this is the group size. Again, you could probably go with a lot smaller medical kit, save an ounce or two, but that's what I had. So that is what I'm bringing. And then I have uh, just toothbrush, toothpaste, and then again, a little thing of soft soap. It's a luxury item, but uh, it smells really good. And uh, you know, washing your hands or face with something that smells really good goes a long way for me, so I'm, uh, I'm willing to carry the extra ounce or so that that has. And then finally in here, just some uh, some Ben's uh, bug spray. So again, that whole thing weighs 15 ounces. I could probably drop an ounce or two, but again, uh, you know, comfort to me comes paramount to an ounce or two. Now, I'm not gonna sacrifice comfort for five or six pounds, but uh, I will for a few ounces, but it all does add up. So that's my toiletries and uh, first aid kit. Next up, we have my cook set. Now again, this doesn't have the fuel in it. So although this would go into the base weight, the, uh, the fuel wouldn't go into the base weight. This weighs 10 ounces. So my cook set consists of a Sea to Summit spoon. It's a polycarbonate spoon, very lightweight. It's actually lighter than my titanium spoons. Uh, and then the Evernew titanium cook set. So it just comes with a mug, uh, very lightweight, great for my hot chocolate. And then I can use this pot to boil water, uh, boil noodles, boil anything. I have a few wet fires in here, not necessarily needed because I do have, I am bringing a gas stove, but we are going to have probably a fire as well. So always have those in here anyway. Then I have the new Pocket Rocket 2 by MSR, a, uh, a lighter, and then just this little uh, microfiber cloth. Makes it easy to clean uh, my pots, so it serves that purpose, but then I can put some of that soft soap on here and rinse my face, rinse my hands. And last but not least, my sleeping bag. So since I'm gonna be sleeping on the ground, uh, on a pad and not in my hammock, I'm bringing a down sleeping bag. This is the Thermarest um, Antares, I think, Antares. I think this is rated down to about 30 degrees, so I should be plenty warm in this. So here is a look all laid out. Again, I have my pack at one pound, 14 ounces. My sleeping bag, which is two pound, two ounces. My shelter system, which has the uh, nest and the wing, comes in at two pounds, 13 ounces for the sleep pad. And then I have my clothing, 
which is two pounds, four ounces. I have my toiletry kit here, 15 ounces, water filter and water bottles, about six ounces. And then I have my food, my food bag, my bear line, and a Ziploc, and that comes in at five pounds, five ounces. So between the water and the food, uh, you know, it does get quite heavy. And then I have my gas canister, which comes in at eight ounces, my cook set, which is uh, 10 ounces. I'm gonna be carrying a little Swiss Army knife in my pocket and then wearing my GoPro. So this would be my complete trail weight. It comes in at just under 17 pounds. If you subtract off the gas, the food, the water, and uh, some of the clothing, you get down to my base weight, which is just under 10 pounds. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today, taking a look at my ultralight pack loadout. I'm going to have a trip video coming next week sometime on Living Survival 2. If you haven't subscribed to that channel, there will be a link below in the description, or you can just point your browser to youtube.com slash living survival too. I will uh, show you all the details of the trip that we're going on, the hiking trip, as well as things like my food that I'm eating and other details that I may not go, uh, may not have gone into in this video. The main thing I can recommend for going ultra light, again, is assess your system, see where you can cut the weight. Generally, that's gonna be with a pack. Generally, that's gonna be with your sleep system, and generally, that's gonna be with your shelter or the, uh, the big three, I believe they call it. You can generally save a whole bunch of weight by modifying those, so those would be the things that I would upgrade first. The other thing is just simply experience. Get out there, see what you're gonna need, see what you don't need. You know, nothing can, nothing is more important than experience to learn what's gonna suit your individual needs. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Please give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you leave me a comment below. Please share this video to any friends and family who might be interested on your social media. And as always, click that red subscribe button, subscribe to my channel for more videos.